The purpose of this video is to describe the basic setup and operation of the TexRap 2215 Spartan Nail Sealer. Before we begin the setup, we're going to take a little tour around the wrapper to familiarize you with the names of the different parts. This whole assembly up here in general is called the film unwind. This roller back here is called the film tracking roller. This bar is a static eliminator bar. This conveyor is called the infeed conveyor. This device and one exactly like it below the conveyor are called the inverters or plows or formers and all three names can be used interchangeably. Over here we have the interlock safety door. This conveyor is called the exit conveyor. These are the film jaws that open and close to make the seal and cut the packages apart. This device is the scrap puller. It has two chains in it which advance the film after each package. This is the scrap winder or take up. And lastly, this is the control panel. Even before we begin to load and thread the film, it helps to make a number of mechanical adjustments or setup adjustments. The first is the height of the top inverter. Lay the product on the infeed conveyor and then raise or lower the inverter height with this crank until it's about a quarter of an inch above the top surface of the product. The next step in the setup is to get the product in the right position relative to the side seal to eliminate tension on that seal. Place the product straddling the infeed and exit conveyors and then move it forward or backward until it is about half its height away from this edge of the conveyor. Next, with your hand still on the product, move the infeed conveyor forward until the rear edge of the conveyor just touches the back of the product and then lock it in place with a locking knob under the conveyor. The last setup to make on the Spartan is to set the seal head, height of the seal head, so that when the jaws are closed, they meet approximately in the center of the height of the product. On the Spartan, the way you do this is with a one quarter inch Allen wrench to loosen clamping bolts here, here, and a matching set on the back. Once those are loose, take a three quarter inch wrench, put it on this nut down here, and turn it. A couple of turns on the front, then go to the back, do the same on the back, and there are scales inside here which can help you determine whether that head is level. And when you get it to the right height, you use the quarter inch wrench again to retighten all four clamping bolts. Most customers find that if the heights of their products don't vary a great deal, they can just set the center seal height for the middle of the range of those products. It's only when the heights of the products vary a great deal from very small to very tall that it's absolutely necessary to move that seal height to the middle of each of those products or product ranges so that you don't create a lot of tension on the seals. The first step in getting ready to thread the film is to place the roll of film on the two gray cradle rollers. The lateral or horizontal position of this roll is very important. A good place to start is to align this edge of the roll directly above the tips of the two formers. Then look at the distance between the two formers and move the roll of film in this direction about half that distance. Then move the locking bars loosely on either side of the roll to keep it from moving during wrapping. After positioning the film roll, unwind several feet of film and feed it down between the two cradle rollers. Next, separate the two layers of film and feed them over and under the film separator bar. Then under the idler roller, around the dancer roller in front, and back toward the rear of the wrapper.
taking the film that you fed from the front of the wrapper, first feed it under this gray idler roller, then over the perforator brush roller, down under the film tracking roller, and once again spreading the two layers of film, feed them over and under the static eliminator bar and then pull toward the front of the wrapper. The next step is to position the perforator rollers. A good place to start is to take the triple row of perfs and move them and place them in about where you think the center of the package is going to be. If there are extra rollers in place, you can carefully move those out of the way and you can put them back if you need to. Then move the O-ring the perforator wheel in place, put the O-ring back on the other side to keep the wheel from moving, and then lower it into a film. And that'll be about where the middle of the package will be, accounting for some scrap on this side of the film. Next we'll thread the inverters. Again, pull a little film toward the front of the wrapper, take the top layer of film, and flip it to the right out of the way. Then taking the bottom layer of film, between your fingertips, work it over and under the bottom former and pull the film forward and lay the top layer back over the top inverter. Next, grab that bottom layer of film that you fed forward and wrap it under the nose of the conveyor and pull it toward the front of the wrapper. At the same time, grab the top layer Put them both between your fingers and pull them forward, making sure that you have even tension on the top and bottom layers. Then again, pull them forward, lift the scrap puller assembly, let it down and clamp the film. Next, we'll begin creating the scrap tail. With the film firmly clamped in the scrap chains, we'll use the F1 and F6 manual controls to create that scrap. First, make a seal. Then feed film forward with F1, F6 to make another seal, and continue that process. When you've run enough film to create a tail about five feet long, begin threading by putting the film under this black roller, over this roller, under this one, up over that roller, down under the dancer roller, up over the other take-up roller, and attach it to the take-up wheel. To know whether you need to fine-tune the lateral position of the film roll, look at the film between the tracking roller and the inverters. It should either be straight and there should be no lines in it. If there are lines in the film running this way, you need to move the film roll a little bit this way. If, however, the lines run to the right, you need to move the film roll a little bit to the left. Next, we'll adjust the height of the film tracking roller. The bottom of this roller should fall right at the midpoint between the two former tips. You can actually see the crease of the film again right in the middle between the two. It's the height of the film tracking roller that controls the tension of the film going over the top and the bottom inverters and it's very important that it be right. On each side of the film tracking roller there's a knob that allows you to raise or lower the height of that roller. The way you may know that you need to make an adjustment to the height of the tracking roller is to look at the two layers of film and their edges right in this area. They should be lined up directly above and below one another. If the bottom layer of film is tracking to this side, you need to lower the tracking roller. If the top layer, however, is tracking to this side, then you need to raise the tracking roller. Next, we'll look at the layout of the control panel. The green run button is used to put the machine in automatic operation. The red stop button takes the machine out of automatic. 
the e-stop stops all functions of the machine. And any time an e-stop is pushed or there's any other fault on the machine that stops it running, that fault has to be corrected and then the white reset button has to be pressed in order to make the machine capable of running again. And lastly, there's the HMI or touch screen which is used to set all of the other settings on the wrapper such as front and rear bag length, heat seal temperature, and dwell time. Let's look at the touch screen. First of all, the home screen shows the number of products or the rate that we're wrapping per minute, the product count, which is the total number of seals or packages that have been made since it was last reset, the cross seal temperature, the side seal temperature, and then the F1 and F6 manual buttons. It tells what they're used for. F1 will jog film. F6 will make a manual seal. And then this arrow points to this arrow, which is the introduction to the menu. So that when you're looking for the main menu, press this arrow and the menu will come up. Navigating through the menus on the touch screen is very easy. To get to the menu, again, press this arrow. The menu comes up. To move, to scroll down, you press the down arrow. To scroll back up, you press the up arrow. For example, if you want to change the bag settings or front and rear bag settings, scroll down to that. Hit enter to choose it. Front bag. Hit enter again to choose that. If you want to change it for, say for example, from 0.25 to 0.35, you just hit 3, 5, enter to change the rear bag. Scroll down, again choose enter, 0.3, 5, enter, and those settings are changed. To go back to the main menu, hit escape, Escape always steps you back menu by menu. Heater settings are the actual temperature of the side and the cross seal elements. This menu works exactly the same way. To scroll through to choose the setting, in this, in this case the cross seal set point, you move it down to that position, hit enter, and in this case it's already at 350. Let's say we want to reduce it to 340. 3, 4, 0, enter. If we want to change the other one, continue to scroll down until we get to that set point. Hit enter. 3, 4, 0, enter. And the two heats are changed. If you're new to this kind of equipment and just getting started, a good set point for the two heaters is somewhere around 350 degrees and that can be raised or lowered as necessary as you get more experience with your film. With every package it's necessary for the film bag to be longer and wider than the product itself. This eliminates tension on the trailing, the beginning, and the side seals. The ideal length theoretically for the bag is the length of the product plus one and a half times the height of the product. This gives a bag big enough to eliminate that tension and, and room enough to blow up in the tunnel so that it can shrink down consistently and give you a great looking package. The front bag is actually the amount of time in tenths of a second, in this case 0.35 seconds, that the machine advances film after one seal is made on a, on a package it advances film for that length of time ahead of the next package coming in in order to create the front bag. The rear bag setting in this case, 0.35 seconds, is the amount of time after which the photo eye sees the back of the package that the conveyor continues to run before it stops to make the seal in order to create the rear bag. The next setting we'll look at is seal time, which is the amount of time that the jaws stay in contact with one another to make the seal and cut the package apart. Again, if you're new to this kind of equipment, 
a good place to start on seal time is somewhere around 0.25 seconds. So when you get to seal time, choose enter to choose it. In this case, it's 0.30. Choose enter again to, if you want to change it. Two, five, enter, and it's changed to 0.25 seconds. It's that easy. And now you're ready to run.